Hey, welcome back to Shop Feud, everybody. I'm your man, Dan. Coming back for a second week and trying to win that title, the Consumable Parts Family. We're just so happy to be here, Dan. Thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, and we're happy to have you. And coming back for the fourth week, the defending champion, trying to keep that title, the Hammer Family. I must break you. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> okay, thanks there, uh, Ivan Drago. Let's uh, go ahead and get into this and see what we got going on today. Hey guys, good morning and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like that crappy attempt at a family feud intro. Hey, if we can't have fun with this, what's the point, right? Hey, today we're going to be talking about battery cables. And if you're anything like me, you got a bunch of toys laying around, you know, ATVs, lawnmowers, campers, boats, all, anything and everything you might have, but everything has a battery. And especially this time of the year, we're coming up on spring, you need to make sure that all of your crap is in tip-top condition so you're not stuck at the lake and you're that guy in the parking lot that can't get his machine running. So, we're going to go over battery cables, why they're so important, and how to make your own. You can save a whole bunch of coin by doing this yourself. Don't get me wrong, you can go out and buy pre-made ones, but if you invest a little bit of time and a little bit of money in getting this stuff for yourself, believe me, you will thank yourself for it later. Alrighty guys, so right quick cleaning off the bat, let's go over the parts list. I'm gonna do my best to link all this stuff in the description so you can grab it for yourself if and when you're interested. Full disclosure, I got all of this stuff from McMaster Car because that's usually where I get my consumable stuff from. But don't get me wrong, you can get it anywhere, that's just my choice. So starting with the bread and butter here, we have six gauge stranded battery cable. This is covered with the EPDM rubber jacket. This stuff is specifically made for battery application because it's really good at being weather resistant for one, oil resistant on the jacket because usually you have this in a car or a piece of equipment or something that's exposed to petroleum based oil and it's super flexible and it retains that flexibility even in cold temperatures. So EPDM rubber jacketed stranded copper wire is definitely a great choice for battery cable and I suggest at least six gauge or larger. Let's go on to the next one. We have here the crimp lug ends for the battery cable. You buy these in different sizes meaning the socket on the end is rated for the gauge wire that you intend on putting it into. This particular one is for gauges four through six so it's good for this one and even a little bigger. This brand is Tweeko. They're particularly known for making welding stuff. If you see that, ESOB. So here's the part number if you're interested in these exact ones. But this I just found works great because they're 100% copper and they're really good quality lug. Next thing on the list here is just some regular old heat shrink. I just do that to clean up the ends whenever we're done. You'll see that here in a moment. And finally, this is an added step. You don't have to do it, but I do. It just makes me feel a little bit better and gives me that added security that I created a good joint. Some lead-free electrical solder. I just wick this into the fitting once everything is crimped and done, and it just makes a really good professional grade joint that you know will last for a long time. So let's go ahead and whip a cable up so you guys can see how this is done. Well, first things first, for your given application, you need to know the length, obviously, of your wire. So go ahead and measure the spot this thing is going into. For sake of argument, let's just say that this one is going to be two feet. How about that? So we'll go ahead and mark that length. Take our Klein cable cutters. Lop that off and get ready to strip the ends. Now, like anything else in life, there's a million ways to skin a cat. 
But whenever I do stranded cables, specifically larger gauge stuff like this, I prefer to use this Gennard wire stripper. I've made a short on this thing in the past and expressed my love for it. This thing is absolutely amazing. If you can tell, there is a blade on top there underneath this black piece that you can twist this thing and change the depth of that blade depending on the thickness of the jacket of your cable. This part is spring loaded. So it actually holds on to the cable as you're using the tool. So you pick your distance away from the end of the cable, simply put the tool on and spin it a couple times. That's all there is to this thing. And the coolest part about it is whenever you're done, twist the handle 90 degrees. And if you see there, take note, it spins the blade 90 degrees. So as you're pulling it off, it puts a nice little slit in the end that makes it really easy to pull off. You just break the insulation and pull it right off the end. And it's perfect every time. As long as you have the depth of your blade set properly, it will not cut the conductors inside, only the jacket and give you a perfect strip every time. I cannot tell you how valuable this thing is. I, mean, I use it almost daily. So once you have both of your ends stripped, let's go ahead and select our applicable lug for our situation. And this certain, for instance, this just happens to be 3 8 ID number six lugs. Go ahead, open that up. So when you're ready to install the lug, make sure all your strands are nice and clean, everybody's tidy, everybody is where they need to be. Simply go ahead and install the lug over the exposed conductor. And then this is the crimp tool I use. They do make, uh, they look like bolt cutters that meant to crimp large gauge wire. But I have found through the years, especially making welding cables and battery cables, one of these hammer style crimpers just really do the job well. And they let you know that you have a good solid connection. Whenever you put this thing in here, you simply just let the tool hold the lug and you smash this end with a hammer. There's not much to it. It's foolproof and it works great. So if you guys can see here, I have my lug inserted into the crimper. Push the conductor into the lug as far as you possibly can. Make sure everything's good and secure and give her a whack. The old what for. And once you remove it, look at your finished product. That makes an absolutely amazing crimp. And you know for sure, without a doubt, that thing is in there forever and not going anywhere. Now, once you have both of your cable ends terminated, the next part, I know you need to do your homework and make sure that your heat shrink fits over this lug before you put them on. Luckily, I've done this a couple times and I know that this will fit over the fitting. So I know this will work. But if you're doing this for yourself, make sure that your heat shrink will work before you do this. We've all learned this the hard way. All right, so now we're to everybody's favorite part, fire. This part is totally up to you whether you do it or not. This is an added step. It doesn't need to be done, but like I said, it makes me feel better. It gives me that confidence that this joint is as well made as I possibly could make it. So I take my lead-free electrical solder, just bend a length in the end to make it easier to gain access to this little part here where the stranded wire is exposed. Heat up your fitting. This basically works just like sweating a copper pipe. The solder will follow the heat. So heat up your fitting and touch the stranded wire until you watch the solder melt into the fitting. It will suck right into there, ensuring you that this has good flow and it's in there all the way. Let's go ahead and see that again on the other end. Man, I don't know about you guys, but that is just so satisfying watching all that solder wick right into the fitting. I'm sorry that the focus doesn't work here, but I only got so many hands. 
Now another added little step here that's not absolutely necessary, but if you have the time and the ability, why not? After you solder these things, you're gonna see that they get a little bit of like heat blazing. You know, they're just not as pretty as they used to be. Go ahead, hit these things on the wire wheel, clean them up, make them new again. You know, you're going to all this trouble to make your own battery cable for your own stuff. Why not take some time and make this as good as you can? You know, the whole point of doing this is because it's better than store-bought. So take your time with it. Make it better than store-bought. Let's clean these things up. Now go ahead and take a looky there. How nice is that? These things are like brand new out of the package. Let's go ahead and finish this up over at the bench, shall we? Now for the final step and everybody's favorite part. You take that heat shrink that we put on here earlier, slide it up until it covers the crimp portion of the fitting. You don't want to get it onto the flat part because that's where it's going to index with your battery and the nut on the stud. So just cover all of that crimped portion. Make sure that you have a good enough chunk covering the EPDM jacket of the cable. Go ahead and shrink her down. I found that a map gas torch really uh, does the trick here pretty quick. All right, now we have our heat shrink, our crimped, our soldered lugs, everything's good to go, and we have a brand new, custom, amazingly well-built battery cable that you know will serve you for a long time. All right, guys, that about wraps up what I have for you today. So like I said before, if you find yourself in need of battery cables for all your equipment, your machines, whatever, heck, even ground straps, this is just a good thing to have in your knowledge toolbox to do. So like I said, I'm going to link all this stuff in the description so you can grab it for yourself if you're interested. Heck, even the tools too. Why not? If you're like me, do you really need an excuse to get some more tools to do a specific job like this? It just makes your life that much easier. So if you find yourself in situations where you need to replace, repair, or add battery cables to something that wasn't even there, yeah, you can go to the parts store and buy the pre-made ones that they have there but you're totally at the whim of what you get there. Whether it's this long or this long, it never fits your application and it really makes your project look janky and kind of thrown together. If you make your own custom battery cables, not only do you get a better quality cable than you would find at the parts store, but it fits your application perfectly. You can route it how you want. If you need to run it through a frame rail or something and then crimp the end on, you can do that because you're doing it. This is an absolutely invaluable process that I found myself doing over the years, and I think you guys will find the value in it too. So, until next time.